Jesus is confronting something very real. And that reality has not changed significantly. Though our understanding may be nuanced today, Jesus is doing something very real. And Mark is telling us that. But his theme is not just about Jesus casting out an unclean spirit, a demon. In fact, Mark says something here in this gospel that's more significant. He is touching on a theme that follows the idea of a miracle being a sign. It's not just something we step back and say, wow, that's amazing. But he's telling us that this miracle is a sign of something greater. It's pointing to something deeper. And for us, it is about Jesus' authority. That's his point. In fact, that's why this event is no doubt at the beginning of Mark's gospel. It fits together with several other events right at the beginning. And Mark is wanting us to know that Jesus is one who has authority. Now, if we worked our way out from this passage, we would clearly understand that Mark is telling us Jesus is one who has authority even over demonic spirits. Jesus is one who has authority in the supernatural realm. If we went back just a, a few verses, we would find that at his baptism, Everyone heard a voice, a voice like thunder. It was the voice of God who said, this is my beloved son. You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. A voice of authority. Mark is marveling that Jesus teaches with authority, not like the scribes, not like anyone they have ever encountered. In just a little while, Jesus is going to heal someone. And Mark is telling us that Jesus is one who has authority over the natural realm, the things that we see. And he has authority over things that we don't see. Jesus has authority over things that we can understand and comprehend to some extent. And Jesus has authority over things that we can barely fathom. His point is this. Jesus is the one with authority. He is, as the demon speaks from this possessed man, the Holy One of God. Now Jesus silences him. It's not the time or place for these evil powers to speak. There'll be others who speak more importantly and give testimony. And later Peter will say something very similar to this demonic force but from a far different perspective. He recognizes the reality of who Jesus is, but from a place of love and faith. And he is more than allowed to speak. But Mark is telling us, Jesus has authority. Now, think for a moment about authority. You may not realize it, but you and I have probably in our lifetime experienced some degree of authority. Maybe you represented an organization or a business in some way. Well, guess what? You had some degree of authority. If you uh, attended a meeting or were a part of uh, brokering some deal or even called on someone as a salesperson, you had some degree of authority. Now, there may not have been some formal goings-on that invested you with authority, but you had backing. You represented some other group. Maybe it was very informal. Now, think for a moment about those who represent an entity or, or a group in a very formal way. For instance, law enforcement officers are representative, aren't they? They represent not just themselves, not just a select group of people, but they represent an entire society who stands behind their representation. And they enact out the, 
the will of the community, if you will. Think about an ambassador who represents a country. There is something of a, an authority about that. Those persons and many others are invested with authority. And Mark tells us that is true of God. That is true of Jesus. He is invested with God's authority. He is God's son. And we have seen that as he calls his disciples, as he begins his ministry. Mark says, Jesus has representative authority. He is representing God. Now in our human condition, we know that that can go awry. It doesn't always work real well. It's not always recognized. But Mark says, here is one that represents God, and he does it faithfully, and God has said so. But there's more. Mark also wants us to know, especially in this instant, that Jesus' authority is a personal authority. Why even the evil demonic powers recognize, own the truth about who he is, they tremble in fear and wonder if now is the time of their destruction. So Mark is telling us here is one who has authority. He represents God, but it's not just a representative authority. Jesus is here, and in a personal way, he has full authority. God works through him, and so the natural order can be suspended. People are healed. Demons are cast out. Anything can happen because here is Jesus, representative of God, but also God's presence working through Jesus. It's representative and personal. And then Mark tells us something more, a, a layer on top of this, if you will, that Jesus' authority is real and powerful and in our midst. This Holy One of God who has all authority stands in our midst. He has the full backing of God. He personally exudes the power of God, and he is here in reality before us. And that's what Mark is saying. This is one who has full authority. Now, here's where Mark is really going. And if we're not careful, we're hung up on all the dramatic elements and asking all the those questions that you and I could legitimately pursue, but they, they lead us away from the place that Mark wants us to go in this passage. It's not a, a how-to or a, a, a primer about all things demonic and evil, and how those things are experienced by human beings. But Mark says, more importantly, this is a sign. And I don't want you to miss this, because if you do, you will miss the most important thing, and that is that Jesus has authority over all things, seen and unseen. Those things that you might embrace in life, those things that may frighten you, Jesus has authority. And so, in a nutshell, here's what Mark is saying. This is the Holy One of God with all authority, and he presents himself for our response. Did you get that? The one with all authority comes in our midst. And now, Mark says, it's up to us to respond. What do we do? Do we respond with belief? Do we own this Jesus? Do we do as those in the preceding few verses did and leave everything to follow him? You see, that's really what Mark is at. He's not just giving us a wow factor. This is a sign. It's certainly a miracle. It's a curious thing. It pulls us in. But Mark says, don't get lost in all of this. Maybe with wisdom and time, you'll understand something more about it. But even then, there are things we don't understand. But know this. You can know this, and you can understand this, and you can dwell in peace and grace because... Here is one. With full authority, the full backing of God, personally powerful, who stands fully real in your midst. And with this kind of authority, what are you going to do? That's really where Mark is. 
What are you going to do in response to this kind of authority? And throughout the rest of the gospel, throughout the rest of Jesus' ministry, Mark continues to present Jesus as this one. And so in the gospel, he comes to us. Here is one with full authority. Full authority that demands a response from us. What are we going to do? Are we going to listen to his teaching? Are we going to offer our lives in response and follow him as the disciples did? Are we going to give ourselves to him that we might experience healing? Are we going to give ourselves to him in the face of a world that is filled with all sorts of things we may not understand that may frighten us, but from whom Jesus gathers us, protects us, delivers us, heals us? See, our focus, Mark says, is not on these evil powers, but it's on this one, the Holy One of God, who is able with great authority to take us as his own, to keep us as his own, to protect us, to bring us near to God. But rest assured, Mark says, we make the choice, we make the response. Jesus' authority compels us to believe, to offer our allegiance, to follow. Here is the Holy One of God who teaches and lives and even casts out demons with authority. And his authority welcomes you. What will you do of the one who has authority over all